Hey, Scott Rockfile back with another podcast that's a month in the making. I'm sorry, I had no idea it's been that long. In my group, Rockfile's Room on Facebook, I asked people, hey, ask me anything, ask me anything. And two people, well, two of my good friends, asked me good questions. And when I go to record, well, I haven't recorded one in over a week because I just, you have to get in the mindset. Like I said, I, it's not something, I do a radio show and that's something I do every day. And I kind of in the mindset that I've got to come up with something funny and interesting. But to do a podcast and talk for five or 10 minutes, I really, you know, I need to be in the mood. I need to have the the impetus, the 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 wherewithal, the I don't know. Anyway, um, so anyway, I keep forgetting about this, to be perfectly honest with you. And I looked it up today, and here we go. Um, Smitty Smith asked, worst concert experience. Um, there's a couple of those. I Honestly, the ratio to amazing concert experiences in my career, I don't have a full count. I estimate it's over 1,000 shows in my life, probably more. Um Probably a lot more, actually, if you think about it, and how many days there are in a year. And anyway, um, worst one of the worst was, and it was a good show in the end, was seeing um, Guns N' Roses and Skid Row when, at their peak of popularity when they could do this. They played the horse track in Birmingham, and it had rained, and you're literally standing in over a foot of mud. People were losing shoes and socks. It was it it, it was over a foot of mud. It was up to your ankles, not higher. And that was a weird experience, especially with Axel. This was at the time that he was taking like two hours between sets um, that Skid Row would finish and they start playing music and then there'd be delays. And um, this happened more than once to shows I went to at the time. And it was, it was maddening because it, you know, you're talking an outdoor venue with thousands of people, traffic's going to be a nightmare and they pushed it all back. They didn't seem to care. I guess that was part of the, the, craziness of it all but that was a pretty terrible concert experience even though the, the show turned out to be really good performances from both bands um another terrible concert experience is two that didn't happen when i was working in montgomery alabama for radio station i would get tickets from record labels to go see shows and every once in a while i wouldn't <laughs> i would just I'll, I'll i'll just go if it was something difficult, like when Jane's Addiction first came out, there wasn't much they could do. And we said, well, nobody knows who Jane's Addiction is, so we'll drive up there. And, of course, it was sold out. Everybody knew who Jane's Addiction was by that time. Um, so that was Jukebox Hero moment. I stood outside for a little bit, and we listened to a couple songs. They sounded fantastic, but didn't get to see the show. Um, the second one was I bought tickets to see Morrissey. And it's funny that he quoted something today about Sinead O'Connor, and he's bitching about people not you know, supporting her when she was alive, but they'll support her now kind of thing. And I'm like, Really? This is a dude who's well known for canceling shows. So he had a show at a cool old theater in um, Birmingham, Alabama, and I had tickets. I lived two hours away, um, but I didn't own a radio or work at a radio station that, that would have advertised the show. And I did update the concert calendar, but nobody had let me know. So I have my, my tickets and we drive to Birmingham and we get there and they're showing a movie. <laughs> and I asked the person at the box, I was, wasn't there a Morrissey show? Oh yeah, he canceled like yesterday. Oh, oh, well, I'm, you know, what's playing? What's the movie? So anyway, th my worst concert experiences were those. Um, there's a couple disappointments. Like one of the times I met Stone Temple Pilots, Scott Weiland was pretty out of it. He was nice, but he wasn't really in the moment. And that was, that was a disappointment because I was a big fan. Um, other times he was great. Um, yeah, those are, I'm trying to think of any. Oh, here's, here's the last worst um concert experience this was a high school experience we had tickets to see kiss in december um it was rare i grew up in atlanta we didn't get snow but it didn't happen if, if they called for snow we get a little bit of ice some frost never got snow so this is the one time we all drove down to atlanta we live right outside of atlanta in gwinnett county it's not far it's 20 minutes you know it's not a big deal but traffic and everything, and the parents were teenagers, were high school, or they're worried about it. So with bad weather coming in, they thought, we're laughing, um, why don't you park your cars and take the MARTA train in? And then you're only five minutes from home, and you can take the train home. Okay, great. So this was KISS, Axe, and somebody else. There were at least two or three opening acts. I don't know why KISS needed that many opening acts. When we get to the venue, shortly before the show sort of started one of the opening acts was still sound checking and kiss had still not sound checked yet, I guess, or maybe there were, it, this was high school. This was a long time ago, but there were like two bands still to sound check. And this was the time the doors were supposed to open. So we got in and it was a great concert. I want to say this was lick it up. I want to say this was the hype was real because this was the first show. They, the first tour they did without makeup. 
And man, it was it was nuts. So anyway, the show runs very, very long due to starting very, very late. And they let us out. And this was at a time there weren't really curfews for concerts at downtown venues if it went to one, two o'clock in the morning. So be it, it did. Um, 80s, what do you know? So anyway, we walk out on the street and it's literally snowed in Atlanta. <laughs> we're like, and we're wearing concerts. None of us dressed. It was, you know, it was 55, 60 when we went in. It wasn't that cold. When we came out of the show, it had literally snowed. Um, everything was shut down. The MARTA train was shut down. We couldn't get to our cars. We had to walk over a block to a Greyhound station um, and to use the payphone to call somebody's brother who might have been in the area and did come to pick us up. Meanwhile, we're freezing to death. We're putting on our concert T-shirts over our other concert T-shirts, so we're wearing two T-shirts and still freezing to death. It was like 30 degrees. Anyway, that was a pretty terrible concert experience, um, but uh, the show was great. So... There really haven't been any bad shows. When I saw the Go-Go's open for the police, they were out of tune most of the set. When I saw Twisted Sister open for um, Iron Maiden, they were pretty poor. There was, some of it was good, but it was a pretty poor performance for them. And Maiden, of course, come out and just destroyed them. So anyway, Smitty Smith, those are my worst concert experiences out of the thousands I've seen. Kent Ray said, probably already know the answer, but who was your favorite band during your high school years? Um, actually, I was thinking about this the other day and about to do a podcast about my, my roots of music, what I, what I got into. The, some of the classic bands I like now I did not like. Either I wasn't exposed to them or didn't give them the, the due that I give them now. Um, Zeppelin being one of those bands that I came to later. That, that I was I was alive and a kid listening to Zeppelin, but every time I hear it, it was, you know, the songs on the radio were good, but I just couldn't get into it, and I, college changed everything, and I became a huge Zeppelin fan. Um, but the first things I gravitated towards, because I was playing music in fifth and sixth grade already, um, I gravitated towards bands that were doing things that were complicated, that were orchestral, like Yes. Yes was one of the early bands. Um, Rush was an early band because the music was more complicated. Kansas, Genesis. Um, after I got out of the young phase where I was listening to the Osmonds, which morphed into Kiss, <laughs> um, by the time I was actually digesting music and enjoying it and everything from the Eagles Hotel California album to Jefferson Starship's Earth was in my collection at the time because my grandmother was giving me those bonus free albums you could get from the Columbia Record Club. Before the tapes, it was records. I got vinyl for free. She would give me these these things, and I would pick out whatever albums they had that I didn't have. Um, and that's how I got introduced to some of that stuff. Once I got into radio and everything, I'm exposed to everything, and my, my taste diverged even more. But anyway, when I was in high school... I still had a love for Kiss, but that was kind of becoming a kid thing. Um, I was definitely liking the heavier stuff. And for us, metal still was a new thing. There wasn't, we didn't call Black Sabbath metal. Black Sabbath was a rock band at the time. Then when Ozzy came out and, and then you had, uh, you know, Iron Maiden and Judas Priest coming out. Well, Judas Priest came out in the late 70s. So I was listening to that. Things that were not so much metal, but just more complicated than what you heard on the radio all the time. Uh, 96 Rock in Atlanta was pretty diverse. So my favorite bands around the high school time, Triumph was a big band for me because a lot of people didn't. I like Rick Emmett's vocals, the guitar work. I, I, mm, they had a brief period. When I look back on their career, what I really, really love about Triumph. But my favorite bands in high school, yeah, I mean, pretty much all of those listed. I was a big Priest fan, big Police fan. Um, definitely Rush, Rush. I came to Rush right about 2112 or just after, um, thanks to radio in Atlanta. You know, I was an only child, so I didn't have an older brother to turn me on to that kind of stuff. I eventually started out hanging with older. When I got into high school, I hung out with a, a junior and a senior, and they were introducing me to, you know, Ozzy or Dokken or whatever, the great guitar bands of the time. Van Halen was a big one in high school, huge. Um, Eddie Van Halen had blown our minds in 78, 79. And so by the time I got in high school in 80, they were firing on all cylinders with women and children first and fair warning. And I um, saw the Diver Down tour, saw the fair warning tour in Fox. That was the last small show they did, I think. Um, last small tour before they went to big arenas. I'm trying to think of other bands in high school. A lot of the bands I still like. I mean, I got into Marillion towards the end of high school. Um, with Misplaced Childhood, end of high school, beginning of college, when that album came out was that time. 
Um, I was getting into progressive rock, or I was still in it. I, we didn't think of Kansas or Yes as progressive. It was just rock. Um, it was just weird rock, orchestral rock. You know, we had other names for it. Now it's prog rock, dude. Um, yeah, those were my biggest bands in high school. If I think back on one of the cassette, it was a lot of hair bands. A lot, I was in a Def Leppard early. Um, they opened for Billy Squire when they were young. They were really good. I was very much into Queen. Um, yeah, so my... My tastes really haven't changed that much. I mean, I like a lot of modern bands that all call those bands, I guess, their their, uh, muse. That's the word I was looking for earlier, my muse. Anyway, those are the answer to the two questions. If you'd like more, put them in the comments below where you're listening to this podcast, and I'll answer questions. I think that's a great way to do it until I can get a better Internet connection and can do a live question and answer session because I really like to do that once a week or once a month if I can work it out. But... Um, internet here is seven megs or lower at my house and anything I try and do comes out choppy between me and the lower 48. I'm in Alaska. Keep in mind. So it's either going through a cable under the ocean or I guess it's going through. The, we don't go across Canada. I don't believe. So anyway, um, those are the answers to the question. Sorry. It took so long. I will do them more often. More podcasts are on the way. Sorry. It's taken so long. Thanks for taking time out of your day to listen to this. Um, my links are below. Thank you for your support. Have a spectacular day.